How's it going, people? I hope you're having a damn great day. Welcome back to another Throwback Thursday, and today we will be looking to replicate and recreate a very effective set of tactics from RB Leipzig and Julian Nagelsmann from a few years ago. Of course, Nagelsmann since then moved on to Bayern, and of course, he is now the German national coach. So, I will say this, in this video, we will be going through five different tactical setups variations to them and all that good stuff so it is a slightly longer video a lot of time and effort has gone into trying to you know replicate very realistic tactics for fc24 and i do think they work very well so if you guys don't mind leaving a comment down below subscribing if you are new and you like content like this and of course the third thing would be smashing the like button please um of course in the comment section if you don't mind as well if you do want to comment of course um you know just out of 10, give, give the rating that you would give to the various different systems. Um, and of course, if you do have a suggestion for another set of tactics that you would like to see on the channel, comment that as well. The first of the five different variations and formations is the 4 triple two. Now this has always been, or not always, but for as long as I can remember, the 4 triple two system has been a staple in the RB Leipzig history of their style of play and how they want to try and play. And of course, I think Ralph Ranić more or less set that out in 2010, whenever he was there, really. Um, and they've more or less always stuck with it, and it has generated a whole host of different successes for the club. And obviously with Nagelsmann coming in, he had to use the system, or he did use the system, because that's how the, the team had been built. But he obviously added his own little tweak to it, and they, they found quite a lot of success. So we will be talking about the 4 triple two, as well as the more defensive, more pressing style of football that they also look to you know, implement into their side, and that is the... 4-4-2 system slightly defensive you could say and argue but more so the aggressive pressing nature um, with the counter-attacking system that is set in play with the system is fantastic i will honestly highly highly rate this 4-4-2 formation and then of course um we've got the other more attacking style of football you could say but the 4-2-3-1 unit that would allow the likes of Werner to shift out wide into the left channel quite a bit and it, and it would allow the likes of Forsberg to drift more essentially into his more natural number 10 position. And more so, the likes of Leipzig would look to try and funnel a lot of their attacking play through the more natural number 10. So we will be going through that as well as, of course, because Nagelsmann is a very good pragmatic tactician, he would also play with a back three system and use it quite frequently. So we will be going through some of that. As you'll see right here, one of the back three systems that we are going to be talking about playing with looking to try and replicate and recreate is the 3-4-3 system, a very effective, useful system. The attacking fluidity is there, having a lot of your attacking played down either flank, also very good with the likes of Rom and Henriks, and at the time it was Halstenberg and Henriks or whoever was on, on the, the wider channels, they were also very, very effective. And then of course, the slightly more defensive type system where you are looking to play with a more back five traditional unit and a midfield three essentially with the likes of Xavi Siemens um, more or less slotting into the more central areas of the field, playing alongside the likes of Schlager and Haidara. I think the, the, the role that Siemens, Simons has, Simon, Simon, same thing, different gravy. I think the role that he has is more or less modeled off of the likes of uh, Marcel Sabitzer, who was also at the club uh, during the time of, of Nagelsmann and whatnot. So yes, we will be running through these five different formations. Now, let's hop on straight into the goddamn video. Okay, so taking a look at the 4 triple 2 formation, I've made no structural changes to it whatsoever, so therefore it would be one goalkeeper, two sense backs, two fullbacks, two DMs, two attacking midfielders, and then of course two strikers. So moving on to the tactics. Now I will say this, throughout the five various formations that we will be using, the tactics don't really change that much. There will be a few tweaks here and there, but the core values of how this team is set out under the likes of Nagelsmann didn't really change it was always going to be a high octane high pressing style of football that he wanted and whether it was a back three system or a back four system it was more or less always the same style and approach to every game so in order to replicate those tactics very effectively the tactical vision that i have selected has been kick and rush now you can more or less go with the gegen pressing style of football which would suit the pressing side of this leipzig team but in terms of how they would look to set out more naturally in the offensive you know end of things it kind of doesn't really reflect a realistic game plan for that side. So kick and rush for me makes the most sense for the side. 
at the same time, they would often look to try and bypass the opposition's midfield, as well as their own, with that long ball in behind, whether it was a, a ball directly into the likes of Paulson, who would then look to try and win the aerial ball and then, you know, win the knockdown headers and maybe even flick it on to a on-running Timo Werner, who would obviously look to try and exploit the space in behind, of course, at that time as well. Um, they had the likes of Forsberg, who would play, you know, as one of the number 10s. And you'd also want and encourage your number 10s to also try and break into that space just in behind. And I do think that kick and rush allows you to do this very, very well. As for the defense and the defensive style, of course, it was a very good pressing system that the likes of Nagelsmann installed in the side. So winning the ball back nice and hard the field and then transitioning into the attacking, you know, style of play, that was more or less the be all and end all of this team. And I think the, the key difference between the, the manager that was there before Nagelsmann and then Nagelsmann was the insane running stats and the high pressing that they would look to try and implement. So pressing is going to be a massive key element to how you're going to play when you use these tactics. As for the team width, it is set to 40. Now this allows you to have a, a decently compact central unit, but at the same time, if you do need to flare out just a little bit, um, and try and you know get to those wider areas of the field you can do this very effectively often trying to pin the opposition players up against the touchline and maybe even winning the ball back in those wider sections as for the depth however i have set this to 85 now more so with the high pressing that you will be looking to implement you need to have a high line to more or less pile on the pressure so if the opposition are looking to you know quickly hoof the ball up the field you would require your sense backs to be on it engaging with the opposition forwards and looking to try and win the ball back and circulate it back into play. Again, creating this wave after wave of attacking outlets. And more so, it was always high pressure, high octane football, and this does allow you to replicate this very effectively. As for the offense and the builder play, it is set to long ball as well as the chance creation is set to direct passing. More so, this encourages your forwards, your front four at times, your two number 10s, as well as your two strikers, to try and exploit the space in behind with those runs. Now, more so, with the long ball approach, you can also look to play that ball in behind, or you can also choose to ignore this. And I do tend to repeat myself with a few of these, you know, tactics, because a lot of people think, well, long ball is, I always have to hoof it up wide and high, and it's not necessarily that you can keep the ball on the floor, play through the midfield if you want, but it, it's always going to be an option in your game plan. And more so, that is what RB Leipzig, under the likes of Nagelsmann, that's how they played. As for the, though, so, as for the width, it is set to 40. Now, it's, it's a very condensed, more centrally focused attacking outlet. You do have number 10s and you don't really want to require them out wide, hugging the touchlines more so that's what your fullbacks are there for. You want the number 10s more centrally combining very well with the two DMs as well as the two strikers. And I think 40 allows a, a good balance for this to happen. As for the players in the box, however, often overloading the attacking area with sheer numbers. And um, it was always going to be four to five players in and around that attacking area. And of course, with players um, in the box being set to nine, it allows you to do this very effectively. Onto the corners and the free kicks, as always, it is set to four. So moving on to the instructions, starting off at the back with the goalkeeper, Gulashi. He was there at the time of Nagelsmann, and he was the number one, outright number one for Nagelsmann during his time at Leipzig. So he is set to come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper, of course, very good at being able to read the game, run off of his line, circulate the ball back into play, play under pressure through the press of the opposition um, when it was required and needed. So therefore, I think sweeper keeper and comfort crosses reflects a very realistic, you know, requirement for a Nagelsmann type goalkeeper. As for your two centre backs, of course, I've got Simikin and Auburn. At the time, it could have been Kanate and um, Upa Makano or Auburn and Upa Makano. They would often quite nicely rotate very effectively as well. But there's no major changes for the center back pairing. You don't need to, you know, change anything. It's more or less the base set of instructions. So progressing on to the left and the right backs, both of them will have the same roles and instructions. Join the attack, overlap, and of course, step up. This does help with the pressing and the counter pressing, making sure that they do get nice and close to their opponents, not giving them that much space and trying to win the ball back nice and high up the field. And of course, with a system like this, especially with your two number 10s often tucking in, you want and require your fullbacks to generate a lot of the width down either flank. So more so the likes of Rahm and Klosterman, or at the time it could have been Holstenberg and Klosterman, you would want and require them to generate as much of that wide or width down the field as possible. Um, as you'll see here for the likes of Klosterman, he's got the same role and instructions as well. So moving on into the midfield. Now, 
How the likes of Nagelsmann wanted his midfield to pan out, when out of possession of the ball, he would want and require at least one of the, the two to be the aggressor, trying to win the ball back nice and half the field, trying to press the opposition, with the other looking to try and cover the area and the space, not looking to engage too much with the opposition and kind of stand off and try and minimize the space and allow for the other players in and around them to either get back into position or try and win the ball back. So for the likes of Hidaria and Schlager, Hidaria will be the, the aggressor of the two, but I will say this, the instructions, nothing really changes too much apart from the interceptions being set to aggressive for Hidaria and for Schlager it is set to conservative. So you would want and require them to have a bit more of a zonal presence to them. Of course, they are going to be covering large amounts of space in the midfield. So you want them to be able to, you know, rotate quite efficiently and effectively on a horizontal plane and try to win the ball back in those wider areas if required or even in the more central areas. As for the attacking support, it is set to balance, allowing them to, you know, have that box-to-box -box role, you know, get nice and high support the attack. Often the likes of Nagelsmann would encourage the double pivots to get nice and high the field and try and, you know, be as involved in the rotational play as possible. Of course, like I mentioned with Hadaria, it's going to be set to aggressive. And then the positioning freedom is set to stick to position. And then, of course, on the defensive end, cover the center. You don't want them drifting too far wide or exposing the back line. So moving on to the other midfielder, of course, as you'll see here, the only real change that we do see is conservative interceptions. Now, this was the Lima role um, at that time for Leipzig. Often also very good at, you know, engaging and putting in a tackle, but at the same time, often allowing the other midfielder to more so do this higher field. Okay, so progressing on and looking at your two number 10s, of course, you've got Olmo and Simons. Of course, it could have been Forsberg and, you know, um, Sabozlai or even the likes of Olmo at the time as well. He was there in the... The latter stages of the Nagelsmann reign but both the number 10s were expected to more or less do the same thing and that was come back on defense obviously always looking to try and help support the wider players or even just the midfield as well as being able to break into the box you want them to be able to make those runs into the box and of course you are trying to overload the attacking area and provide crossing options for either fullback so more so break into the box is essential and then of course that free roaming role allowing them to have the creativity in the wider areas or even more centrally at times to be able to pop up in the little half spaces pull players out of position and try and create for the further forward players as you'll see here for the interceptions it's also set to aggressive of course this does help with the counter press that you are looking to implement with this system as you'll see here for the likes of um simons or the right-sided attacking midfielder Come back on defense, get into the box, free roam, and of course, aggressive interceptions. Onto your two strikers now, we've got the likes of Appendo, who is replicating the Timo Werner role, as well as Paulson, who is replicating the Paulson role. So we'll start off with the likes of Yusuf Paulson. He said to stay central, be a target man, and have aggressive interceptions, like I mentioned earlier. Often, they would launch the ball into him, he would win the aerial duel, flick it onto one of the forwards in and around him, or even just have the ability to hold the ball up and then look to lay it off. The system does work very well with the little flicks and layoffs and it does allow you to open up quite a bit of space because you often have on running forwards. Um, and of course, stay central. You don't really want him drifting all over the place, especially with the other striker having the ability to drift wide or stay central as well. And then finally, of course, the defensive support is set to come back on defense. Now more so, Paulson would often drop off of the back line, drop a bit deeper, link up play very nicely with the other players in and around him and more so the comeback on defense allows you to replicate this very very well finally onto the likes of timo Werner and his role a balance width is essential allowing him to yes drift into those wider channels if required if needed often allowing him to use his pace in those wide areas and of course getting in behind would also help you do this often looking to exploit the opposition's back line aggressive interceptions will be set to be on for him of course also looking to try and win the ball back nice and hyper the field and turn it into a counter-attacking opportunity and then finally the, the defensive support is set to basic defensive support yes he can also look to drop off a bit more but because Paulson does this on the regular you'd often find that Oppenda would look to try and stay further up the field as well as Timo Werner during his time at Leipzig okay now onto the more defensive slash pressing um style of play that they would look to revert into when playing a four triple two system um, and again, it's just going to be a 4-4-2. Now, the tactics do slightly change. Like I did mention, there are a few tweaks here and there, but more so the core values and the key elements of a successful Nogglesman side, they don't change. 
So taking a look at the formation at hand, it is going to be a 4-4-2 formation. I've made no changes to it. So therefore it would be one goalkeeper, two center backs, two fullbacks, two DMs, two wider midfielders, and then of course, two strikers. Now moving on to the tactics, the tactical vision is still set to kick and rush with the defense and the defensive style slightly changing. It's now set to pressure on heavy touch. Now more so, they would still look to press and if the opportunity was there, maybe the opposition make a mistake or a lose touch or a pass, they would look to obviously latch onto it and turn it into a counter-attacking opportunity. But more so, this system was mainly used when they were playing up against the bigger sides, the sides that they knew would dominate possession. So therefore, they weren't overly worried about the possession stats. Of course, it was something that Nogsman wanted, but obviously, he was a realist, he's a pragmatic man. If he knew that the, the quality of the opposition, maybe it was a Bayern Munich at the time. Of course, I know that they also played in Manchester United, um, although they did beat us and knock us out of the Champions League. Um, but anyways, um, if, if there, there was a, a better side that they were up against, maybe a Man City as well, they would look to try and keep the structure and the integrity of the formation at hand. So more so, pressure on heavy touch allows you to do this quite effectively. The team width is set to 15. Now, I know that you are playing with wider midfielders and they are quite wi widely stretched, but with it set to 15, they can also look to compact and come in a bit more. But at the same time, because of their natural positioning, they can also look to try and help support the wider midfielders or sorry, the, the, the fullbacks in those wide areas trying to pick up the wider runners from the opposition. As for the depth, it is set to 50, slap bang in the middle. I, I would assume that Nagelsmann didn't overly want to invite the pressure from the opposition, and more so if you do have a very low block, you can allow for the opposition to creep up and more or less camp in your half, and I, I don't think that was what he wanted. So 50 would reflect a good mid block, a very solid hard to break down mid block, minimizing the space in behind, so you can't be exploited in that manner or way as much or as frequently as what the high line would do. But at the same time, if you did win the ball back and you did turn it over higher up the field, it would be less of a distance for your team to try and cover in order to get to the opposition's goal. Obviously for the offense, no major changes for that long ball and of course direct passing. Um, the width is still set to 40, don't need to change too much with that. Players in the box slightly reduced now to seven and allowing for three to four players to be in and around the attacking area. And then of course, corners and free kicks as always still set to four. Onto the instructions now, starting off at the back with the goalkeeper. The only difference that I have made or the only different differential change that I have made is um, the saving outside of the box is now set to balance. Of course, you are playing a mid block, so you don't really re require him to make those runs off of his line. Um, and you would expect the back line and the defenders to try and deal with any through balls over the top. Um, so therefore, I don't think it's a necessity. As for your back line, they are still set to their base set of instructions, along with the two fullbacks. Now, again, a mixed attack and a mixed run type as well. You don't really need them to consistently bomb down the flanks because you are more or less trying to focus on the structural integrity of the, the natural formation so if the opportunity is there they will look to take it but if it's not they'll look to also keep their position keep the structure of that back four units and make sure it's very hard to try and exploit them the only other change i have made which is more or less the same as the balance approach is the step up now again with the counter attacking not, not the counter attacking with the gagan pressing and the counter pressing you still want the fullbacks to be very engaged very physical with the opposition player so therefore i think step up is a necessity as you'll see for the likes of ram same role same instructions as well into your midfield again no major changes of course the likes of schlager will be the cover whereas the likes of hadaria will be the aggressor of the two midfielders but again no major changes to their you know instructions from the balanced approach as you'll see for Hidaria, same role, same instructions as well. Now, progressing on to your left and your right midfielders, again, they'll more or less try and mirror one another, come back on defense, cut inside and come short. Now, this will allow them to, when in possession of the ball, drift a bit more century and try and, you know, reflect that 4 triple 2 system, but still having the more natural wider um, positioning on the field, of course. And then aggressive interceptions and a balanced approach for crossing runs. Sometimes breaking into the box, other times hanging up further back and I'm um, looking to facilitate a bit more. As you'll see for the likes of Olmo, same role, same instructions as well. So onto your front two, of course, for Paulson, he's got the same role and instructions, no major changes for him. And I don't think his roles really change too much in the side, depending on whether it's a back three or a back four system. Um, but for the likes of Werner, a few tweaks to it. He is said to drift wide, more naturally looking to try and pull players into those wider channels, more so the left-hand channel. 
um, with his pace and his ability to arc his runs in and out of the more central areas. But the other change that we do see is he's set to come back on defense, allowing him as well as Paulson to drop a bit deeper and tuck in almost into the midfield. And this helps with the aggressive nature of almost stopping and preventing the opposition, the opposition from building out from back to front very effectively, preventing those passes into the more central areas and trying to cut off the supply chain to the midfield where it is obviously well known that if you can disrupt the opposition's midfield, you'll more times not win the game. Unless they are bypassing the midfield, then it's a, a different story altogether. But more so, you want your two strikers dropping into the midfield, dropping off of the back line as well. And that also allows you to maybe open up a bit more space in between the lines as well as um, between the defense. Now, progressing on to the 4-2-3-1 system, like I said earlier, this would allow the likes of Werner to more naturally drift into that wider left channel and play as a left or a left winger or a left midfielder. And it would allow for the likes of Forsberg to drift more centrally and play as a more natural number 10 just in behind the striker. So taking a look at the formation, it is going to be a 4-2-3-1 narrow. And the only changes I have made is I've converted the left and the right attacking midfielder into a left and right midfielder. So, therefore, it would be one goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, two DMs, one attacking midfielder, two wider midfielders, and then, of course, one striker. Now, with these tactics, of course, there's no major changes to them. If you have a look, it's still set to 40 team width, 85 depth, long ball, direct passing, 40 set to 9 for players in the box, corners and free kicks still set to 4. Now onto the instructions, the likes of Gulashi, he's been reinstated as that sweeper keeper and of course he's still going to be set to come for crosses. For the likes of Simican and Auburn in this, you know, structure and formation, they wouldn't overly look to try and engage. So therefore I've set their instructions for the inceptions being set to conservative and that allows them to try and keep the structure at the back very much intact. Um, as you'll see for Auburn, same instructions as well. For your fullbacks, now... What I did note with the system, the likes of the left back, whether it was Halstenberg or whoever it was at the time, they would often bomb forward, have that nice free roaming approach, being able to combine very nicely with Werner, who would often tuck in as that inside forward. So the, the left back would often, you know, kind of create the width down the left hand channel as much as possible. So for his role, join the attack, overlap, and of course, step up. For the right back, however, Prosterman, he would often... Yes, get forward if needed, if the space was there to attack, but more so, he would stay back and kind of form a back three system. So, in order to replicate that very effectively, stay back while attacking, invert, and then of course, step up. So, onto your double pivot, the likes of Hidara and Schlager, their roles don't change whatsoever, so therefore, everything will still be the same as the balance, as well as the more defensive approach. As you'll see here for Schlager, same role, same instructions as well. Into the more attacking side of things, of course, the likes of Danny Olmo slash the likes of Forsberg. He is set to having a basic defensive support, allowing him to drop a bit deeper, help support the defense if required, or potentially he could choose to hang further up the field and maybe kind of join the likes of Paulson in creating that front two um, for the for the counter press as well. Um, so more so a basic defensive support allows you to replicate this very nicely. The support on crosses is also set to balance, allowing him to sometimes break into the box, other times hang on the edge of the area and try and facilitate a bit more. For the positioning freedom, however, it is set to drift wide. Now, I wish you could dictate which, you know, area they would look to try and drift into. Now, more so the likes of Forsberg and Timo Werner would interchange, allowing Forsberg to take up that more wider left channel and Werner to come inside a bit more. But of course, you can't really do this that well, so therefore just set him to drift wide and Hopefully with the instructions that Werner has, um, as well as combining with the instructions that the attacking midfielder has, they would look to more naturally do this, which I think it does work. But of course, this game is always very unpredictable, so you can't always guarantee that. Um, but anyways, he is set to drift wide and then of course, aggressive interceptions. As for the likes of Timo Werner slash Appenda and Simons, they both have different various instructions. So both will be told to come back on defense, of course, looking to try and help support in that manner. As for the likes of Timo Werner, you want him being able to cut inside as well as getting behind, often arcing his runs into the more central areas of the box. And this is also allowing for the likes of Olmo to drift into that wider left channel where the space will be vacated. Um, and this also helps with the likes of Rom bombing on forward down the left channel as well. Um, so yes, you want to try and use his speed to your advantage, often breaking in behind and making those central runs. 
as you'll see here for the interceptions it is set to aggressive and then of course get into the box for the cross onto the likes of simon he is set to come back on defense having a balanced width as well as a balanced support now simon's could have been you know um Sabaz Lai, of course, or it could have been Olmo as well. Um, but again, more so a natural number 10, playing in a slightly wider area of the field. So yes, in a, in a winger position, but again, more so as a wider playmaker. So you still want to require him to, yes, sometimes get in behind, but at the same time, he can look to drift a bit more centrally, combine very well with the other midfielders. And I think that a balanced support as well as a balanced width allows you to do this very nicely. As for the interceptions, it's set to aggressive, and then finally the support on crosses is set to get into the box. Finally, onto the likes of Paulson, he's got the same role and instructions as before, no major changes or requirements needed. Now, progressing on to the two back three units, of course, you'll start off with the 3 4 3 system, a very effective system that they did use countless times under the likes of Nagelsmann. So for the formation at hand, I have selected the 3-4-2-1 and I've altered a few positions. I've dropped the two central midfielders as well as I've dropped the two wider midfielders um, more or less in line with them. And this helps with the defensive barrier that you are looking to try and create in certain moments. So therefore, it would be one goalkeeper, three centre backs, two central midfielders, two wider midfielders, two centre forwards, and then of course, one striker. Now progressing on to the tactics more so, it is the same as the 4 triple two system, you would still want and require the same rotations to occur, the same, you know, style of play to happen. Um, and therefore, I've, I don't think it's a necessity or requirement to change too much with it. So therefore, I've left it as the same. As for the instructions, starting off at the back with the goalkeeper, of course, come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper. But we do see here a few changes with the natural back three system. The likes of Lukeba as well as Simiken, who are replicating the, the roles of Fosterman or could have been Auburn or whoever in that wide right and left center back role they are set to conservative interceptions now just like with the roles of the two midfielders you'll have the one aggressor and the one person to try and cover it's a very similar type of situation with the back three system so the two wider center backs would look to be the the, the, the center backs that cover whereas the the middle center back I've selected the likes of Auburn to do this he would look to be the more aggressor, step into the midfield in certain moments, especially when building out from back to front. Of course, this was the likes of um, Upa Meccano, who would often try and, you know, take up an extra spot in the midfield as an extra passing option to try and progress the ball further forward. So in order to replicate that role very well, very effectively, I've said join the attack as well as step up. Now, this will allow him to also be a bit more of the aggressor when you know engaging with the opposition attackers so into your double pivot now we've got the likes of hidaria as well as schlager a slight you know role change for the two but still very similar i will say that for schlager here so to stay back while attacking and of course stay on the edge of the box so if they do get forward you don't want them over committing too much and breaking into the box you want them more or less on the edge of the area trying to rotate the ball into those wider sections who will then hopefully create those cutbacks or crosses for the forwards the interceptions for Schlager, of course, we've designated him as the more conservative of the two, the guy who's going to cover for the other more aggressive um, midfielder, and then cover the center and stick to position. As you'll see here for the likes of Hidaria, he's set to a balanced attack, so he can be the more box-to-box -box of the two, allowing him to break forward, of course. Stay on the edge of the box, though, for the, the crosses, also looking to rotate play, but every now and then you do tend to see one or the other break into the box as well. And then, of course, He's going to have aggressive interception sets to on. Finally, the defensive positioning is set to cover the center, and then just like with Schlager, stick to position for the positioning freedom. So moving on to your left and your right midfielder, both will have the same roles and instructions. Now, because they are left and right midfielders, you also want them to have a very good defensive awareness to their game plan. So come back on defense is absolutely essential. Stay wide as well as getting behind is going to be a, a massive factor to the success of this of this side. You, you aren't really playing with wingers. These are your guys who are going to provide the width down either flank. So you need them to hug the touch lines and also use their pace to your team's advantage. I will say this, the switch of play is going to be a massive weapon to your arsenal when using the side because quite often the opposition will overcommit and overload in the one area of the field, whether it's, you know, the left side. That would often mean that the right hand side is very much open for that switch of play and therefore you can try and exploit the space. As for the interceptions, it's set to aggressive, looking for that counter press in that wider area of the field, as well as getting into the box for the cross. 
With the overcommitment of players in and around the box being set to nine, it's four to five players, right? So one of your fullbacks needs to be making that back post run or needs to be in the box for a potential cross or cutback opportunity. So therefore, getting into the box is absolutely essential. Onto your left and your right forward. Now, for the likes of Werner, slightly differing role to the likes of Simons. For Werner, he'll be told to stay central. You don't really want him drifting too far wide, especially with the likes of Rahm and Hendricks providing a lot of the width down either side. So therefore, having him as an inside forward helps him out quite a bit. You would still want and require him to break in behind as much as possible, especially if the opportunity is there. As well as the interceptions being set to aggressive, it helps with the Nagelsmann counter press. Finally, the defensive support is set to basic, so you can also choose to drop a bit deeper or potentially hang further up the field for a potential counter attack. He is the only other forward that is set to a basic defensive support. The other two forwards often drop a bit deeper and help support the defensive end of things. As for the likes of Simons, again, a slightly differing role with a few, you know, similarities to the Werner role. Stay central, yes, as an inside forward, you would still want and require that. But for the attacking runs, he is set to a mixed attack, allowing him to sometimes play as a false nine, other times break in behind, just like with Werner, or maybe even use his physicality to Leipzig's advantage. The interceptions should be set to aggressive. I don't know why it wasn't, but it is supposed to be set to aggressive, and that does help with the aggressive nature of the counter press. And then finally, come back on defense. As for the likes of Paulson, the same role and instructions as the previous ones. So progressing on to the more defensive back three slash back five units that the likes of Nagelsmann used during his time at RB Leipzig, of course, a 5-3-2. So taking a look at the formation, it is going to be a 5-3-2 holding. I've made no major structural changes to it whatsoever, so therefore it would be one goalkeeper, three centre backs, two wing backs, one DM, two central midfielders, and then of course two strikers. Now with these tactics, they very much mimic the 4-4-2 system with the way I've set them out. Of course, kick and rush, pressure on heavy touch, often not looking to overly engage with the opposition, keeping the shape, keeping the structure very much intact. The team width being set to 25 and the depth being set to 50. The team width is slightly wider because you are playing with a back five system. You don't necessarily always require too much compactness. Otherwise, you have overcrowding and it can lead to quite a few issues. So that, that's the only major change I have made. The offense is set to long ball, of course, and build up and, and direct passing. Sorry, direct passing. Um, the width is still set to 40 with the players in the box being set to 7. And of course, the corners and the free kicks, as always, set to 4. So taking a look at the instructions, of course, Gulashi here is back to being set to comfort crosses and having a balanced approach for the saving outside of the box. Your back three system, slash your back five, but your three sense backs, they are set to the same set of instructions as before with the other back five slash back three system. Conservative interceptions for the wider sense backs with the middle sense back being set to join the attack and step up. For your two full backs slash wing backs, they will both be told to join the attack, overlap, and of course, step up as well. So taking a look at the midfield, of course, Schlager and Herdaria have the same role and instructions as before. But with the addition of the third midfielder, this could have been Forsberg or Sabazlai or Olmo as, as well. Let's not forget about him. But I've selected Simons because he can also fulfill this role very, very well. But he will have a bit more of an attacking awareness and prowess to his game, often getting forward, combining very nicely with the two further forwards as well as being able to break into the box for the crosses. For the interceptions, I've set it to normal. Of course, you do have the other two, the one being more of the aggressor with the other being a bit more of a conservative. But with this role, you can expect a bit of both. If need be, he can be a bit more aggressive. If not, he can also look to be a bit more conservative at the same time. Finally, with the defensive position, it's set to cover the wing, often drifting out wide, helping support the fullback, as well as the positioning freedom on the offensive end also sets to drift wide, often drifting into that wider right channel. As for your front two, of course, Paulson sets to the same set of instructions, stay central, target, uh, target man, target player, aggressive interceptions, and then finally come back on defense. As for the likes of Arpenda slash Werner, again, the same role and instructions as well, but come back on defense, is very much a requirement because again just like with the 4-4-2 you want your two um strikers or forwards to be able to drop a bit deeper drop into the midfield and prevent those more central passes being made from the opposition's back line into their midfield and there you have it guys that is how i would replicate the julian nagelsmann rb leipzig tactics into fc24 of course if you guys have enjoyed this video i really hope you have but if you have, 
please smash that like button down below, subscribe if you are new, and hit the bell notifications. That would be fan damn tastic. As for the rating out of 10, I would give this an 8. I think it's a very good system. It's a very well rounded system. Again, the pragmatic style of football comes into play. It can be a bit clunky when going forward, defensively wise, on more or less every system that they have run or every formation that they have run. I think it's very, very good. Um, but yes, it can be a little bit clunky at times um, when going forward. So that is something to keep in mind. But you guys can let me know down below how you found the various different formations and these tactics. Anyways, until the next one, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.